Greetings, SGF, Road to one 2 here, and today I'm coming at you guys with another Heroes and Generals weapon modding video, this time for the Americans. Now, I should warn you, on the, on the Americans, I don't have exactly everything. The only thing I haven't bought is the 1919, but I will tell you right now that my personal opinion on it is that you should keep it stock, and probably not put anything on it except for the sights and then the barrel. So again, let's start with the smallest caliber weapons, or the smallest size, and then work our way up to the big guns. So let's start off with the trusty old 1911. Now, 1911, as I've said before, you're going to want to go with a damage build a damage build and rate of fire build on all the pistols because really you're not going to be using them to snipe. This is... the power of a handgun comes with the fact that you can put an extreme amount of damage on someone at the cost of only two equipment points. So you want to kid out for that with the most damaging ammo. But, however, on the 1911, I've actually found that to use the Cat Attica Kinetic, and I have a lot of other mods of mine on the uh, 1917, but I would use the match trigger and the match sights so that we could kind of get a great increase in fire rate, and the heavy pistol bolt, and the chrome black barrel. And you'll actually see that with the AMF you will get like a tiny bit more damage but that is hovering right around a three shot kill to the chest on uh, with no heavy set so that's the way that I would run that now on to the 1917 the 44 Magnum I think that was the cap no it's 357 Magnum which reminds me, I actually need to name this. But I used to run the Attica, or, eh, Attica AMF, but since the addition of the United Defense Super P Plus, that will bring the damage up to about 51. So that's a two shot kill. And I did run it at the maximum rate of fire, which is 480, which is extremely fast. But as you can see, that, that most people will not click that fast. And also, it's not a good idea to run this 1917 as fast as possible. Simply because you've only got six shots. A bit, they're extremely powerful shots, but you know that's going to mean crap for you if you can't take your time and aim them. And the reload speed is 3.3 seconds, so even though I run fast reload gold, it's still a little while to reload. So I actually, I used to run the hair trigger and the light and spring, that would bring me up to 423, but if you look at the shot circle, that is a lot of stability loss, and you are not going to be able to fire this in a panic fashion, which is basically the reason that you have a pistol. Now, I run the barrel simply because any range gain that you can get is nice, and it works out perfectly so that the drop-off is right at the point where it would drop off at stock, it will only deal a few damage less. So no internal, and I would actually run match trigger, and if you look at the sight picture and the shot circle, it's very close to stock, so it's extremely accurate. So the 1917 is a very good firearm to have. Now, onto the grease gun. I should actually show you my tanker because he has the grease gun setup that I would use. Uh, this is the Thompson in disguise loadout because the grease gun is a wonderful starter SMG. The only thing is, even though it did get a rate of fire buff, it's still extremely slow. You'll see if we take these off and go over here. It starts out at 480, which, you know, for a generally four-shot weapon, unless you have, you're against someone with heavy set, then that's 
very slow, so you want to bring up the Grease Guns Rate of Fire as much as possible. This is one of the very few times where I'd recommend that you max out the RPMs. However, I mean, you can use the Marksman Trigger Job, and as you see, it brings the accuracy and stability back to stock. But I'll take the Field Trigger Job for a little bit more accuracy. Now, for the SMGs, you know my policy if you've watched my Axis Weapon modding video, but the more shots that you can land on your target, the better, which is why you want to make these as accurate as possible. So you're going to want to use the United Defense Ranger instead of, say, the Attica Connect or Attica AMF. A sight, of course, one positive, no negatives, why wouldn't you grab it? Uh, for the trigger, I would actually use the field trigger job because of how I explained earlier. Uh, the light and bolt, because of the extra range gain that you'll get. If you look at the damage over range chart, you know, that's not that big of a difference. And stainless steel barrel, tiny range gain for less stability. Again, it's not worth it. Now, on to everyone's favorite weapon in the game, the Tommy Laser. Now, I have the Christmas skin on mine at the moment. I have found that this is the best setup. Again, it's the same thing, basically, as the Grease Gun. Accuracy ammunition with the sights. However, I will not max out the rate of fire. You can bring it up to 900 rounds a minute, which is extremely fast, and have the accuracy as stock, or bring it up to 800 and have a little better accuracy, but the stability loss I find when running at 800 with the field trigger job is, it, it just gets to me. I can't hip fire. I mean, yes, the, hip, the 800 is wonderful if you're going a aim down the sight load, but I would recommend that if you can learn to hip fire with the SMGs because it's absolutely worth it every bit that it takes you to teach yourself. If you can run circles around a group of people that have aimed down the sight only because they're so unstable guns or assault rifles or LMGs. Now again, um, you can use the heavy spring, and that does bring the accuracy and stability down uh, to a quite nice of a circle. However, light and bolt brings you up to 720. That's a wonderful RPM. Stainless steel barrel, again, tiny gain. It's, it's not worth it. Now... Onto my favorite, and I actually really like this. This has become a staple loadout of mine, but it is, uh, it is my M2 Grand Auto, which with this, I would recommend only having one build for it, seeing as it does only have a 2.2 power scope. You can use that like a short range ACOG or whatnot, and then you can also, uh, it's accurate enough to be used at long range. So I have maxed out the rate of fire with the field trigger job and light and spring. Stock ammunition, you want to keep that fire circle as, as tight as possible. And then the scope. And now ordinarily you may think, well, you know, why? Why would you run Garand instead of anything else? And it's very close to stock 50. So it'll be a three shot kill, it'll two shot if they've been nicked by anything. But the way that I have it with the battle rifles, rifle set, with the field trigger job and light and spring, you'll see it fires at 378 rounds a minute. Now if you remember, my pistol I also have mod to fire at 378, and I will run the Garand and the pistol together, and so that will bring me up to 14, basically, two-shot bullets. And you only need two of those on a person. Three, maybe. And again, since it only has eight rounds in the magazine, fast reload gold is pretty necessary with this. Because you're not trying to snipe. This is an assault grand, 100%. However, if you're feeling really adventurous, 
you can use the Birdie Clays Mark III, and those will two-shot Gold Heavy Set up to about 50 yards. But it also increases the stability vastly, so you'll be struggling to put shots on target, especially with that fast of a fire rate. Now, onto the, the Rifle M1903. Again, I run a OHK build on it, and that was, I mean, a trick that I found with the 1903 is if you set the sights at 200 whenever you spawn, then you can aim very easily. You don't have to cover anything up with the front sight, which is something that I forgot to mention in the last video about the Car 98. The Car 98 has hooded sights if you set them at 300 as soon as you spawn then you can use the middle of the hood like a hollow sight and the bullet will go there at 100 yards. But anyway, normally I would run the German number one. However, on my recon, I actually have, uh, I've taken off the eight times. Uh, again, I don't, I'm not really an eight times person. I might get if I get the fine duplex, which is what I'm saving up for at the moment, but I've put the two times fine cross, and now is the time that I would run the chrome molly instead of the octagon barrel, because with a two times scope, you're not going to be able to get that far away, and the chrome molly is as much damage as possible. I mean, yes, I realize I could put the birdie clays on it and only limit myself to 200 yards, but... I'll have to get back to you on that because typically when I'm sniping with the Black Death, the recon rifle, I am well within 200 yards. So to be able to punch through silver heavy set would be nice. So that's always an option if you don't want to go the eight times and the octagon barrel. You have to admit that that scope looks pretty nice. That's, uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted an American Recon so badly, is because the scope looks so awesome. Anyways, on to the LMGs. I have this one, the bar, and I know it's going to look weird, but it takes some getting used to, but this weapon is absolutely worth it. This is the only one of the infantry LMGs that has a relatively small clip. At only 20 rounds, you want that to last as long as possible. So it's going to be a three-shot weapon. And so what I've done is to make those 20 rounds as effective as possible, I've made it as accurate and stable as I can. It starts off with a stock 480 rounds a minute, so I went ahead and stuck on the usual sight and the stainless steel barrel. I mean, the chrome line, it's not that much of a buff if you're not going to use the heavy bolt or whatnot. So I would go stainless steel. And I actually, I keep thinking about adding on the light and spring, bringing it up to 553. But I found that I can reliably hit headshots because the sight is not bad on this with the heavy spring out to about 150 yards. And it's going to make that 20 round clip last a lot longer. And on to the 1919. I've already said it once, I'll say it again. It is possible to get this gun up to a two shot kill, but I would either run it stock or with the sight and barrel the uh, sight and then the accuracy barrel because look that's an extremely high base damage you, know, you you don't really need to add any more onto that and yes the two, the two shot kill is a nice mechanic but it makes it extremely unstable and it's not going to be useful in any type of building at all Maybe I would add the light bolt to bring that up to a 720 rounds a minute. However, I've not bought it yet, so I can't really tell you. But that would be my recommendations. And on to the specialty weapon. 
the assault rifle, the M1, M2. And I'll be using this for others as well. But right now, I would run it with the... I mean, I've got so many moods that you can get into with this weapon. You can get into an assault mood or a long-range mood or a mid-range mood. But typically, if I'm going to go in assault mood, I know lots of people will jack it up with the maximum, the 10-28 rounds a minute. However, I keep it on 900 with just the light and spring and add the scope, which is currently on my grand. You can use this 2.2, as with the Grand, as a type of short ACOG scope, which it really needs, because the muzzle flash from this gun, whenever you are firing at anything higher than stock, and even at stock, will obscure your view of whatever you're trying to aim at. So the sight is, the scope is almost necessary. Uh, a nice thing that I found, if you use the heavy spring, this is my mid-range. But if you use the heavy spring and the field trigger job, you see it brings it back up to the base of 720. And I have this selected, that's why it's also showing the things. But it increases the stability. The stability gain from the heavy spring is a little more than the stability loss from the field trigger. So you can keep it at the stock rate of fire and with an increased stability, however, it gets a bit expensive to run. Now, if you want to just run the heavy spring, that's more of a mid to long range. I mean, it, it's, again, it's an assault rifle. You're not going to be sniping headshots at 300 yards with this thing. However, you can get some nice kills at out to about 100 yards, simply because it's slow and it's steady at 600 rounds a minute, because the base recoil is not you know, not very much. Barrel, you want to keep recoil down on this weapon, 100%. Keep the recoil down, because it has an extremely fast fire rate. Even now, I will fire at short burst. Very rarely will I go and hold down the trigger with the light and spring equipped, especially with the scope. The ammunition, I mean, the... The United Defense Jackal, it adds a nice damage and rain boost. However, accuracy suffers, stability suffers. While some people like it, I personally don't, because what's the point of having extra damage if you're going to miss three more shots than it would take you to kill them, than if you didn't have that damage boost and ran with just the Light and Spring. Now, as far as I know of, and I've talked to my buddy, uh, his name is Thorndale, he's featured on my channel, but he has his own little rant about the M1, because I have neither of those. But the M1 and the M1A1, he's told me, are identical in stats to the M2. So, again, for the M1, I would probably use a scope, because again, the sights are terrible. And it appears that the stock rate of fire is about, I can't remember if it's 513 or 480, or maybe even 400. I think it's the M1A1 that's 400 stock, but I would just increase the rate of fire. I mean, barrel, eh. This is, with the semi-autos, is the only time that I would say that you should add the United Defense Jackal and the barrel. Since it's semi-automatic, you're not going to be uh, just spraying it down there. And the scope is go always going to be an option for the M1 carbine for paratroopers. It's good, it turns that bad side into a nice side. The M1A1 can't have the scope, so I would just say stick the field sights on it. And I would go with just the light and spring, not the trigger, unless it feels really slow after that but to increase the fire rate so that you can click as fast as possible and still get a bullet out. But on the semi-auto versions, I would recommend the stainless steel and the United Defense Jackal so that you can get the most damage out of this gun. Anyway, that concludes my American modding video. I hope this helps all you guys in your future battles. This is SJF0212, signing off. Goodbye.